Hey everyone, this is Catherine and welcome back to my channel where I talk about tech and getting your first programming job after graduation. So you've been learning to code for a few months now, whether on your own or at a coding bootcamp or whatever. And while you know a lot of syntax of languages, maybe you still don't fully understand how it all fits together within the context of an application. I've been there before. I follow tutorials where I'm just following the code that the instructor gives me line by line. But the minute something goes wrong, I have no idea where to start to fix it. And as soon as I start trying to build my own projects, I don't really know where to start. If this sounds familiar, don't worry. We've all gone through that stage and I've been there myself. So in this video, I want to go over some of the tips and tricks and things I wish I knew when I was learning to code. And maybe I can help you save some time and a lot of frustration in your journey to becoming a software developer. The number one fastest way to get, get off of tutorial treadmills is just to start building stuff. The worst thing about watching these tutorials is that you're under the false belief that you're actually being productive. You trick yourself into thinking that you're learning something, but you're really not. Or you're not learning as fast as you could be if you were compared to if you were actually building and implementing that knowledge. Using this information that you gathered from tutorials and applying it to your own personal projects is the best way to retain that information. Remember that knowledge is only useful if it's applied and you know how to solve real life problems with it. So a really good place to start is just simply Googling beginner project ideas and just try building, pick a few and try building them once you've spent a few weeks watching tutorials. Also, if you're learning full stack or front end web development, uh, one resource I've been loving recently is frontendmentors.io. It's a website that gives you a bunch of these project ideas. And not only that, they also provide the images, the icon assets, the Figma files, and the UX designs. So you can just focus purely on coding. Most importantly, don't just watch a step-by-step -step tutorial where the instructor feeds you every line of code. Or if you're going to do that, try building on top of it. For example, if you're watching a tutorial on creating a form to register users, maybe you can add in validation or implementing single sign-on. The reason we enjoy passively watching is because it's so easy. The second tip I have for you is to follow a structured learning path. There are like a billion things you need to learn in order to become a junior software developer. It can be really easy to get overwhelmed. For example, you start learning React and then you realize halfway through that you really needed to learn JavaScript and CSS before you started the React tutorial. And that can be really frustrating. So in this case, I would actually recommend watching a few YouTube videos on web development learning paths that'll give you a structured order to learn certain languages and technologies that make sense. And do that, of course, after you finish watching this video. Alternatively, you can also look at some coding bootcamp curriculums. The third tip, and this one's really important, focus on one thing at a time. I get that you might be in a rush to learn as much as you can in as, as quickly as possible, but in this case, slow down to speed up. A really dumb mistake I made when I was learning to code was jumping from language to language and really only getting a surface level understanding without really mastering any single language. I was learning JavaScript and then read about how Python was going to have that, you know, Python developers had the highest salaries and I was just suffering from shiny object syndrome. So here's a secret. Once you've mastered one language, one programming language, it's actually a lot easier to learn another one. They all share the same fundamental underlying principles like loops, declaring variables, etc. The benefit of just mastering one language also is that it is much less frustrating and more satisfying to really become an expert in one language rather than feeling like a chicken with your head cut off and like a perpetual newbie in five different languages. That is the fastest way to get absolutely nowhere and stay on the tutorial treadmill. So don't become a victim to shiny object syndrome. Number four is deliberate practice. And you might be thinking, hmm, deliberate practice, what does that have to do with programming? Deliberate practice refers to a special type of practice that is purposeful and systematic. 
While regular practice might include mindless repetitions, deliberate practice requires focused attention and is conducted with a specific goal of improving performance. Like I said before, the reason why we watch so many YouTube videos where the instructor gives you every single line of code and you just type it in is because it's easy and it's comfortable. We can just mindlessly go through the motions. But the thing is, learning to code is actually pretty difficult. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're, they're probably lying to you. If you're not at all stepping outside your comfort zone, you should really question, are you really challenging yourself and pushing yourself? And are you really learning and progressing as fast as you could be? All right, last one, number five, stop memorizing. Focus more on understanding rather than rote memorization. I've been working in the industry for several years now and I still sometimes forget how to link to an external style sheet without having to look that up on Google. These days, information such as certain git commands or you know flexbox properties, they're only a few seconds away, a few search queries away. So there is less value in memorizing stuff like that. So instead, focus on learning what questions to ask, how to debug, what to search for on Google. Half of becoming a software developer is understanding what to type into the search bar. If you're a junior developer preparing for a job interview, there are certain things you probably should memorize, such as like, what is post versus get, I guess some basic get commands. But aside from that, obviously you're always going to have Stack Overflow and Google and I use that every single day. I don't know a single developer who doesn't use that every day. So don't worry so much about memorizing. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you learned something or I helped you in any way, please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Talk to you later.